So hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to um, move with our example uh, on the theory of consumer behavior in the utility maximization process. So in the last video, what we did is we derived uh, the Marshallian demand functions for good one and good two. So those functions are this one, x1 here, and this x2 there. Notice that the Marshallian demand functions are functions of prices and income. So you see M there and you see prices there. And uh, that's the form of a Marshallian demand function in that you should expect that if you derived it correctly, you should see income there and you should see prices. So you shouldn't see any other quantity of a good there. It should just be a function of prices and income. Now, the Marshallian demand functions are extremely important in the theory of consumer behavior in that uh, these demand functions really underlie a fundamental well, law in economics, which is the law of demand. But before we get to that, there are a few properties okay, that Marshallian demand functions do satisfy. Okay? And the first uh, property that they satisfy is a homogeneity of degree zero in prices and income. Okay, so what does that mean first intuitively? Well, uh, it's homogeneous of degree zero if, for example, consider this case, say uh, you're the consumer and you have an endowment M or you have your income M and you chose to uh, consume, uh, say, five units of good one, given that it costs a dollar. So say that your income doubles, okay? If good one were a normal good, you would increase your consumption of good one. Right, uh, that's expected because as income increases, uh, assuming it's a normal good, your consumption of that good will increase. Now, picture this scenario. Suppose your consumption for good, uh, suppose rather that your income doubled, but at the same time that your income doubled, okay, the price of good one also doubled. Okay, what would happen to your demand for good one? Well. In reality, if it's, a, if it's a property of a Marshall demand function, your demand for that good wouldn't change because uh, in a sense, since prices doubled but your income doubled, uh, they will offset each other and there should be no change to your demand. So let's prove that property here. So it should be that if I multiply t, uh, say some scalar t, which is t greater than zero to the Marshall demand function for good one, Okay. So I'll do this for good one, and it should apply for good two as well. That should be equal to if I scaled uh, prices and income by that same amount. Okay, by that same amount. So this should be equal to that. Okay, and what happens is uh, we're gonna get the degree, uh, the exponent that the eventually ends up being, and that will be the degree of homogeneity. So let's solve for that. So we know that x1 star is alpha m over p1. But then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply t to m and to p1. So it's going to look like alpha tm over tp1. And then what we can do is we can isolate out. So we get t alpha m over tp1. And we're left with uh, t over t times x1 star. So alpha m over p1, that's just the original Marshall and demand function. And if you divide t over t, that's t raised to 0, x1 star. So the degree of homogeneity is 0. And uh, at least for the Marshall and demand function of good one, it does satisfy that property of homogeneity of degree 0. So let's test out that one for good 2. Okay, so t, x2 star, p1, p2, m, that should be equal to x2 star, okay, t, p1, t, p2, t, m. So we're left with uh, 1 minus alpha, t, m, over t, p2. Again, t, 1 minus alpha, m, over t, p2 which is t over t x2 star equal to t0 x2 star. Again, 0 is the exponent. Therefore, uh, the Marshallian demand functions for good 1 and good 2 
are homogeneous of degree zero in prices and income. Okay, so we have that. Okay. So that's the proof for homogeneity of degree zero in prices and income. So let's move on. Okay. Now, another property of a Marshall demand function is that it's strictly increasing in income for the most part. Okay. So let's prove that. And we prove this property by just taking the derivative of a Marshall demand function, say x1 star, p2m, with respect to income. So if you recall, so I'll just write it down here x1 star is equal to alpha m over p1, x2 star is equal to 1 minus alpha m over p2. Okay, so if I take the derivative of that with respect to m, okay, I get, uh, so I get alpha times p1 minus, uh, uh, copy the one, uh, so derivative of bottom, 0 times alpha m, over p1 squared, okay, we're going to be left with alpha p1, uh, this is 0, over p1 squared. We use quotient rule, and we're going to be left with alpha over p1. And that is greater than 0 for all p1, p2, greater than 0. Okay, next we derive x2 star, okay, with respect to uh, income. Okay, and we're going to be left with uh, 1 minus alpha times p2 minus uh, derivative of the bottom with respect to m, that's 0, times 1 minus alpha uh, m all over uh, p2 squared. And that should be equal to 1 minus alpha p2 over p2 squared. Cancel. You're left with 1 minus alpha p2. And that's also greater than 0 for all p1, p2 greater than 0. Since these derivatives are both positive, therefore, income and uh, your demand for a good have a positive relationship. And that's to be expected. And that's another property of a Marshall and demand function. Now, crucial okay, to the property of a Marshall and demand function is strictly decreasing in own price. And this underlies, okay, underlies, a fundamental law in economics, which is the law of demand. Okay. So how did we come up with those basic models? Well, it came from this particular law here, which is the law of demand. So, um, and it became uh, apparent in the Marshall and demand function. So this is essentially the proof of that law. So if you take the derivative of that Marshall and demand function, with respect to its own price. So for good one, its own price is P1. Okay, that's going to be equal to, uh, so derivative of the one on top with respect to P1, that's 0 times P1 minus uh, copy on top. Derivative of uh, P1 with respect to P1, that's 1 all over P1 squared. We're going to be left with negative alpha M over P1 squared. And that's less than zero for all values m, p1 greater than zero. So that derivative is negative and it implies the inverse relationship between prices and quantities. Because remember, your Marshall and demand function is a quantity of how much you will consume. So as the price of the good goes up, the quantity that you will consume or demand for that good, okay, it's a Marshall and demand function, will go down. And that's the origin of the law of demand. Okay? And you'll notice the same thing is true for good too. Okay? P1, P2, and M over, uh, oops, we forgot the partial, P2. Again, that's 0 times P2 okay, minus, uh, copy the one on top, 1 minus alpha M times 1 over p2 squared, we're going to be left with negative 1 minus alpha m over uh, p2 squared. Uh, and again, this is uh, less than 0 for all values of m, p2 greater than 0. And this is another uh, proof of the inverse relationship between price and the demand. And those are some properties of the Marshallian demand functions.